Hello, everyone! There we go, I hit the right button this time. Uh, folks, that was called an audio renderer issue, and in, what that means is the person controlling the stream is a complete idiot. That's right, Will Crosby here, host of Local Chat for today, episode 26, the first day of July. Joining me, as always, is my faithful companion, Ian Gibson. Hi, how's it going? You know, it's, it's going pretty good. Also joining us, the man, the myth, the legend, it's Jake Terrio. Hi. He's so happy to be here. Jake Terrio, I spell your name correctly every time, and then I still go to Twitter to check to make sure I spelled it correctly. Oh, but, no. Anytime I write my name on anything, I still am like, wait, <laughs> is this how it's spelled? I like, every time I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure I nailed it. Let me just check his Twitter just to make sure. It's just so, because, you know, you fill out a government document and there's always that bit at the end that's like, under penalty of perjury, do you swear <laughs> all this information is accurate? I'm like, I think so. Oh, God. Man, I think what if your I last name right. was perjury? That would be That pretty. would be funny. <laughs> I, um, I always get the, like, halfway done with a government document and then you make, like, a small mistake. Like a like you write a letter wrong or a number wrong and they're like, Oh, I can just fix it and then you like overcorrect it and you're like, Are you gonna accept this or should I do a different yeah. one? Um I get like um I get anxious handwriting where my handwriting's not that great in the first place. So I'm like, do it right, do it right, and then I just start making mistakes and I'm like, Oh god <laughs> I'm like oh. my my dad does that. my dad and I we write in all caps because he doesn't like his handwriting, so he started just writing in all caps. So now I do like mm -hmm. lower caps sometimes, and it's, it's so frustrating. Folks, um, speaking of handwriting, we have lots of gaming things to talk about this week. <laughs> um, but before we get there, we first have to talk about what we've been playing. And uh, Jake, I'm going to have you start off because it's been a while since you've been on here. And also, you have a, a couple games on your list that I want to hear you talk about. So spill <sighs> the beans, girl. Yeah, so the first thing that I was I've been kind of been dabbling with is uh, Game Builder Garage, which I had had my eye on when I first. Huh? No, you're good. Something happened. Yeah, I fixed it. Oh, uh, Game Builder Garage. I had had my eye on because it seemed like a, a reasonably accessible game dev tool for me, a game dev idiot. Yeah, but it's still. There's still just, I'm like, I'm not even all the way through the tutorials. The tutorials are very thorough. I'll give them that. There's mm -hmm. like seven or eight of them for a, all the different like game types you can make. And each one of them is like no less than 45 minutes to get like, here's Wait, like, all the nodes you get. How many are there oh. in total? I think there's eight total. And one of them was like... <sighs> An hour and a half. God, that sounds awful. It reminds me of Dreams. Will, do you remember when we did our stream of Dreams and we were like, well, let's just do the tutorial first yeah. and then we'll hop into some games. And we had to abandon it pretty quickly because the tutorials and Dreams were just like, here's part one. Great job. This is about eight hours to go. Yeah. Uh, but also, it, it didn't I feel like, it, it, just real quick, it didn't feel like you were learning game development. It, Felt like you were learning how to use their wonky console-based tools. Yeah, it is a little bit of that, definitely. Of like, oh. there's stuff that because I've dabbled briefly in like Unity and Unreal and and Game Maker Studio, there's bits that like I recognize, and then parts yeah. of it that I'm like, I j I need to learn their tools to get this to work. So I have not finished the tutorials, um, but Oof. that's what. I, I was like, can I do something simple? And that's then what led me to finally download Twine. I was like, I just uh, need something stupid simple for me yeah. to hash out an idea. Um, so, yeah, but Twine is not me playing a game. That's me playing with software. So I'm not going to talk about it's, that, though I am making a video about it. It is still very interesting because I've been following your Twine stuff on Twitter um, which is funny because you were working on a lot of that stuff as I was finalizing stuff for the subpixel aerospace thing. So I was like, oh, mm. this is funny because he's doing all this lunar stuff. Um, space. Space. Space is good. Yeah. Um, that reminds me, um, this is not really a news item, but it was kind of interesting to hear this. So Game Maker Studio 2 ha 
they typically had a 30 day free trial. They mm -hmm. actually oh, expanded right. that recently yeah. to an endless free trial. So the way that works is you can play the game out of the editor, but you can't export an exe of it without paying. Yes. But um, oh, that's just, nice. just kind of another cool thing between yeah. Godot and Unreal Engine and Game Maker Studio 2 and Twine. It's a great time to make bad yeah. video games. <laughs> Unity is free to download too, and they have yeah. the Lego micro games. What's software? Oh. There's a famous game that was Game Maker. I mean, there's a I lot of like them, but there was. Oh, what well, there was a, there was something else too. Game There's Maker's what I learned on yeah. in college is we had a whole Game Maker class. So, um, yeah. But now but it's yeah, it's free, so that's nice. Anyways, continue, mm -hmm. Jake. Oh well, so dovetailing off my brief mention of the Lego micro games in Unity, I played Lego Builder's Journey over like two and a half hours, and it was delightful. And there's a video about it on our channel now, as of this. Now, week. real quick, what? Mm -hmm. so, so I see this game, right? But I don't, I don't quite understand in terms of like you said, two and a half hours. But like structure, what does it offer? How do you get it? How much does it cost? That, that's the thing I don't quite understand. It was, mm, I can't remember if it was twenty or thirty dollars. Let me double check. Oh, that sounds a lot for two and a half hours. That does sound a lot for two and a half hours. I think it's pretty, it was $20. $20. Okay. okay. I think it was, okay. it's pretty replayable. Um, okay. There's, oh. a, I think what it breaks down to is, I think I read that it's 40 levels, which is more than when it released on Apple Arcade. They, it's like an expanded um, version on mm -hmm. PC and, and Switch. Um, and if you get it on PC, you can do the RTX enabled and get it ray traced. And it looks oh yeah amazing, um, but yeah, it's just like forty levels, and you are given the tools with which to build a path for your little dude to get from point A to point B. Mm -hmm. And there's varying degrees of like puzzles that you have to solve and get around and mm -hmm. all that. But um, I do think nice. though, um, the ray traced version I believe is two thousand dollars. Including the cost of a ray trace video <laughs> card, if you need to purchase that at this mm -hmm. point in time, I should. That's get not a, a joke. That's, I got a ray tracing a card. You do, I can, yeah. I can trace those hey, rays. I'm not saying you're poor, but will if you if you needed money, you could probably sell your 2070 super for at least a thousand bucks right now. <laughs> oh, totally. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, I will say I don't know if you saw, but it, it uh, Builder's Journey certified made no clips own Danny O'Dwyer cry. So it's um it's because he's a he little Irish. Irish. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned potato around different. him, he starts crying. <laughs> um that sorry, game looks sorry, really Danny, if you're watching this. <laughs> Danny's not watching this. No. Um, oh, little earth apples. <laughs> <laughs> Boom to dare. Uh what is the sorry, uh, not to go back to it, but the gameplay in Builder's Journey. So it's like puzzle yeah. levels, like you move level to level. You, your, your, uh, the player controls are essentially just manipulating bricks. You gotcha. pick them up from elsewhere on the level and move them to somewhere else to make paths. Okay. And that's, that's it. Um, okay. You don't control the, the characters and you, oh, there's a little bit of camera. Sometimes if you can like move things and see a bit of the level that was obscured, um, from, but that's it. From what I've seen of it, it, it the camera angle is kind of like Captain Toad, sort of. Yes, like, turny, it's very isometric. reminiscent of like it's like Captain Toad, Monument Valley. Gotcha. Um, Fez. Yeah, Cubert. No, not Fez. Fez is flat. Fez but turns. No, Fez is two D, three. It's yeah. It's two D, but like hit butt yeah. turns. Yeah. Hit, Hitman Go. Yeah, and Laura Croft. Hitman Go. Yeah. Go. And Tomb Tomb Go. Great. Uh. This next one I saw you playing right before we started. Mm -hmm. I I redownloaded Minecraft onto the new computer and God bless. It's it. I've not played it in a hot minute, and it's I guess they did like a really big expansion recently. So there's copper. A lot of there's copper. There's a bunch of new stuff. There's bamboo. I don't know if that's recent or not. That's that's uh, kind of old. That's pretty yeah. old. Llamas. There's raids on villages. Which that's I, that, yeah, that's more. Times. That's more. That's past when I was regularly playing Minecraft. Yeah, and there's but a lot I think, of new music. 
Yeah, I, th I think I'm kind of right there with you where Minecraft's one of those games that I revisit every couple of years, but every time I do, I find stuff in the game that I hadn't even heard had been added to the game. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. not like it drastically changes it. It's just all this new stuff where you're just like, what? what is that thing? Is is that a B? Is, yeah. is that a B? You know, yeah. it's weird stuff happening. Now? Yeah. Crossbow? Um, yeah, but that's, I mean, not, there's not a lot more to, it's Minecraft. It's, it's a solid revisit every time. Yeah, it's it's 100%. always a good time playing Minecraft. Old faithful. <laughs> um, and then I I got Moonlighter on Switch on sale, um, which is are you, either of you familiar with? Moonlighter? Yeah, that is the the sale dungeon. Story yeah, yeah. You're, it's I, a dungeon no. crawler where you then yeah. go sell the things that you collect in the dungeon. Messenger. I, that's the other one that I was almost confusing it with. Gotcha. I um I think I met, I talked about this. It might have been last week or two weeks ago because I downloaded this on Game Pass and started playing it, and it wasn't. I don't think it was for me. I played like four or five hours of it, and I'm not sure I'll. I I didn't get out of the first dungeon. There's I guess five dungeons, and I hadn't really figured out how to get out of the first one by that time, which I felt like I probably should have. And I don't mm -hmm. know if that's me being an idiot or the game being obtuse, but mm -hmm. it just didn't feel good. You know, it had a charming aesthetic, yeah. but yeah, I wasn't like sold on the combat like, or anything. Yeah, it was weird. And some of the it, the rolling and stuff, it reminded me of Enter the Gungeon combat, but wasn't yeah. as good. Yeah. Um, and then the, the, the resale stuff, it was pretty easy to, to min-max that after yeah. just a couple <laughs> cycles of selling things. Also with like the selling stuff, I, I noticed sometimes even though like a person discovered... Like you did the pricing thing, it wouldn't update in your journal sometimes, and also like the no, journal was hard to navigate. I didn't that. Like the, jur the menus were hard to navigate. Yeah. I I will say they could have done a little bit more to to clarify the menus. Yeah, there was enough in it. Like I need a term for this, but there was enough in it that I am looking. Like I'll look out for their next game, but like as far as playing any more of Moonlighter, I, th I think I'm pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But it was on sale, so I got it for like four bucks or something. Oh, yeah. that's so. super. Cheap. Yeah, it was on Game Pass, so th that's where I played it, which I think I actually already owned it from before, so maybe not. Maybe I didn't save money. <coughs> um, moving on. That's all I've been playing. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you've been playing video games. Unlike Ian Gibson. No, just kidding. What have you been playing, Ian? I've been playing a little bit. Um, a bit. Uh, I'm probably like two, three hours into Mass Effect 3, and um, it's just kind of weird. I don't really have any fully formed opinions on the game yet. I'm still early into it, but uh, I've heard people say it's a lot more action focused, and I can definitely feel that in that uh, it takes a while for it to. I don't even know if it's ever going to open up, but I feel like the other Mass Effect games have like an hour of setting, and then they're like, we're going to open it up a little bit to you. And it feels like Mass Effect 3 is just kind of like, Here's a story mission. Here's a story mission. Here's a story mission. Mm. Um, and then the other thing, but the other thing is like, I can't really, f I don't want to fault them too much for it because they kind of storied themselves into a corner where they keep saying, you know, hey, the Reapers are coming. This big thing's going to happen. You can tell they have these big set pieces and stories that they really want to tell. But when you get to the third game, you, it, it's very difficult for you to have these set pieces and story points to tell and still be an RPG where people are making choices and deciding what to do. Yeah. Um, the, the, sh it's weird. They focus some more on the shooting. They added platforming somewhat where you can jump and really? it still doesn't feel good. Yeah. But it's not like you're actually jumping. It's just like, here's a gap. Third so person, you need, right. Oh, yeah, it's still third person. like a jump, yeah. like third a jump point. Platforming is... Yeah. And they added like ladders, but it doesn't feel great. So it's like they focused more on being more of an action game with combat, a little bit more movement options, but they didn't make any of it feel any better. So it's just like, it, you know, I, this isn't going to translate into audio, but it just feels like you're swimming a little bit. You know, it doesn't feel great. Um, and, you know, like they did with Mass Effect 1 and 2, they just make these weird little design choices where they're just like, Ah, uh, you're not really going to buy your weapons anymore. You're just going to find them on the ground and you're going to modify them now instead of doing it, instead of purchasing upgrades. So you're going to find mods to put on them 
And it's just like, it's just kind of weird that they're making these like lateral design decisions where instead of making something better or improving upon the original design, they're just like, we're going to change the design completely. And it's going to feel just about as good, bad as it did in the first place. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of had this weird point where I was, I was working today and I was like, I was like, I, I want to know what happens in Mass Effect 3, but I don't want to play Mass Effect 3. And it's kind of funny because there was this whole controversy with Bioware and their developers and some of them, some of their story writers talking about how they they focus on story so much so they want to have options in their games that you can skip the gameplay and just watch the story. And it was kind of a hot button topic at the time. And I definitely didn't like that idea. But I now kind of understand where they're coming from because if you've made a game that doesn't feel good, but the story is much, much better, yeah. then I would, if there was an option in the menu, there, there is an option in the menu that's just like, don't let me make choices in dialogue scenes, like just play the dialogue scenes out, which is kind of interesting. But if there was another option that said like, skip all the combat and just <laughs> take me to the story points, I would probably pick that. Play all I would just scenes. be like, yeah, yeah, but just like, you know, just like play the cutscenes in the combat. So I, I right, understand right. what's going on, but I don't have to actually do any of the controller stuff and just let me sit down and watch a three or four hour movie, you know, finalizing the Mass Effect trilogy. I would 100% do that. So I, I think I'm still going to play it. There is part of it, which is I don't know if I'm burned out because I played one and two back to back and then I took a week break and then I came back to three or if it's genuinely not a terribly great game at pulling me in i think i'm gonna keep playing it because i do want to see the the end of that story but at the same time it's just like i don't know it's you know you guys yeah. ever have that moment with games where you're like i really want to play this game i feel like i should play this game i feel like i should finish it but i'm just slogging through well i feel like we had a similar thing with uh wolfenstein 2 yeah whatever they Wolfenstein named 2 it. and also the new colossus uh terrible name it's like horizon zero dawn like i'm very interested in finding out like yep. the story but i don't want to keep playing the game same with uh ghost of tsushima was a little bit like i want to do more story but oh. i got too bogged down in the side stuff that i like yeah i think something else came out too at the same time but it's a little less with that because that story wasn't as crazy and string was more about the gameplay but definitely horizon yeah. zero dawn well, Will, yeah. Soma has a safe mode. Oh, where don't I know You it. can just is... play through the whole game and you won't die from combat encounters, so you can just barge past enemies. I still haven't oh. played the rest of that game, but I'm pretty sure I guessed the entire plot of it. But now I want to play it to see if I was right. It was. I was really glad that it wasn't an option that was available at launch, but when I went back and I think very early in the subpixel life cycle i made a video about soma but i didn't have any um good capture of it mm -hmm. so i went and played through the whole game on safe mode in like four or five hours because um, mm -hmm. i knew where to go to get through all the levels so yeah. i was just able to like breeze through stuff to points i knew i wanted to record yeah. um hades does that as well they, they oh, have a yeah. mode where it's, oh just really? like Lowers the difficulty, ups your damage, everything. I think you can even turn on invincibility if you want, just to get through that run and finish it and trigger the next story point. Mm -hmm. well, um, that's that's good because that the I, the writing on that game is longer than the Iliad, apparently, in terms of word count. I can see that. Wow. I don't, the Iliad's not that long. It's though, like ten pages, or maybe the Odyssey. <laughs> I don't. Um, I think they said it was like four hundred thousand words or something. It's no Ayn Rand. Let me put it that way. Yeah, it's <laughs> no, no Jerusalem. Atlas shrug. <laughs> um, the other game I've been playing is a little game called Cruelty Squad. So this this game has been on Steam. I think it was floating around a little bit. I think it officially came out on June sixteenth. Um, I'd been seeing some murmurs and rumors. It was a lot of like flavor of the month on certain subreddits and image boards and stuff and seeing gifts on um, from uh, some journalists on Twitter. It, it's hard to describe this without looking at it, but this is a podcast. So let me give you, let me give you, it's basically like somebody took MS paint and vaporwave and did that entire aesthetic. And then they went into Photoshop and they hit control U and they burst saturation to the maximum and contrast to the maximum. Right. And then, they took that aesthetic 
and they just made a like like future future neo capitalist anti humanist horribly dystopian like smiling dystopian <laughs> pessimist view of the future where you're basically playing a corporate hitman who is running hits on members of the same business or other businesses because of their poor or too good performance. So for example, there's one CEO that you have to take out in a mission and it's a first person shooter. So you're going through and you're, and the whole mission briefing is like the CEO is doing too good at his job. And we want this company, they're doing too good at this project we gave them when we really need this project to fail so we can get the insurance payout or something like that. <laughs> Actually, no, it was better. It, it said, we want this project to fail to satisfy our human sacrifice needs. And it was like, okay. You are Taco Bell in the Demolition Man universe. Oh, yeah. Yes. But exponential. So like that, that aesthetic idea. And so it's just, it's kind of weird. The, um, the gunplay's okay, but there's like a whole bunch of different weapons that you're slowly unlocking as you go through these missions. There is one level that the textures, I was in a house and the textures on the wall, I realized was just a very blown up low resolution picture of like a whole bunch of Funko Pops stacked on top of each other. <laughs> and it was just blown up all over the wall. Like that was just the interior wall texture. What? And I didn't realize it until I finally stopped and looked at it. And it was like, you know, the Funko Pops box where it's like the top and then there's a little circle in the yeah. bottom and there's a Funko Pop in the middle of it. It was just that, but like 20 by 20 blown up and then just a whole just tiled of it and I'm gonna it was play like, this game now <laughs> it's it, it it's actually pretty interesting because i um I, I did a video it'll be coming out soon but in the video at the beginning i kept saying this ai feels great it feels very dynamic and then later i realized no the ai spawns in the exact same spot every single time but it's just such a weird game and such a weird look that that these like not great game design decisions or like game flaws are hidden mm -hmm. um and the other thing is, like, if you start shooting the enemy, the sound design is bonkers. So as you're walking, you just hear, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's your walking noise. And you start, sh and then, like, if you're in a building, you hear the people walking around above you, and they're just like, <laughs> and then, like, when you start shooting, you can tell there's reinforcements coming because you just hear them start kicking down doors. You just hear them go, and it's just like what's <laughs> happening you know and there's like cybernetic people with like toxic clouds and the first mission you do the your handler for some reason gave you some bad juice so like halfway through the mission you're like shooting somebody and all of a sudden your screen goes Whoa! and then it like comes back into focus it's just a very wonky game it's 20 bucks it's somebody who had a crazy aesthetic and just built an entire game around it it's a hundred percent worth it um just i i know i'm not doing a great job of describing it we've got a video coming out soon jeez it's 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 one of those things where i i can't say it enough if as soon as you look at it you go yes it looks like a better cyberpunk 2077 you know like cyberpunk 2077 is the like corporate vision of cyberpunk and this is like indie euro dev in a basement vision of cyberpunk and it feels great we have to get William Gibson on the show to see which one he prefers. I'm going to be honest with you. This is too much for, this is like outside snow crash. This is like outside Johnny Mnemonic. This is just insane. And I, I really like it. It's got some flaws, but the aesthetic just hides all of it. It's great. It's fantastic. That sounds That's all I've been playing. What studio would you give the Johnny Mnemonic IP to, to make a video game out of it? I mean, they already did. It's basically cyberpunk. I know, but honestly, what if someone could do it better? Um, I, I think it should be a VR game. Hmm. I don't know that. You see, I think the, okay. I know I already said this. I think the problem is cyberpunk is so close to Johnny Mnemonic that I'm just not excited by the prospect of a Johnny Mnemonic game. You know, <laughs> wants so. to bring Ice T back. Yeah. Anyways, Cruelty Squad, check it out.
Sweet. I'm definitely going to check that out. Um, as for me, uh, Tuesday, Ian and I played Dark Alliance with Karen on stream. That game yeah. is... I thought it would be like a good podcasting game or some sort of B game like that. It has that ability, I think, within itself, but it is very glitchy, very um, hitchy. The enemies are not good. The enemy AI isn't very good. Um, there's so much stuff around it that if it was fixed on launch, I think it would have been that B game, but it is most certainly not. It is, um, it's just Let me put it this good. way, if I may. There's two things. Number one, it looks like a finished AAA product. It plays like a test alpha. Yeah. Bugs, how it feels that the AI, which literally 90% of the time, the AI just spawns and stands there and lets you beat on them for 15 seconds before they turn towards you. The, the second thing I will say is, this game is basically free right now. It's on Game Pass for PC and console. You should be subscribed to Game Pass. There's no excuse. So it's basically free. It is not worth playing. It's no. not even worth trying. And that is a very low bar to clear. And it's, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah, not at all. Um, as much as I like the old Dark Alliance games, uh, I will not be playing <laughs> any more of this. Um, also... Uh, speaking of Game Pass, uh, Backbone, which is a point-and-click adventure game. Raccoon? Uh, what? The Raccoon? Yes, the Raccoon. Uh, it's, I mean, it's less point-and-click because there's no like inventory management. It's more like a story-based detective game. Uh, I, I'm really enjoying this. I'm through two of the acts so far. The story is very good. Um, I think there was a cool twist into it and like kind of where you're going is interesting. The writing is also very well done. Uh, it's sort of like a noir. Everyone is animals. Uh, you are a detective. This lady comes and asks you to find her missing husband because she wants to divorce him, uh, which is great. So you try, you go and try to find the guy. It leads you into this whole big mystery thing. And then you meet your partner and all this sort of stuff. So it's very fun. My only gripe with it is I was playing it, uh, during the heat wave, so my AC was always running, and I was like, oh, it's kind of hard to hear this game, but that's fine, whatever. And then I switched to headphones yesterday, and there's, like, no music at all. There's, like, half the time I, I thought my speakers oh. were just off, like, by accident. So I don't know if it's a glitch or something, but, like, there'll be moments with music and action, and, like, you'll hear things, but there's just, like, no ambience, really, other than rain, and, like, I feel like half the time I just muted my monitor by accident. So that was super weird. I, I don't actually know if that's a glitch or not. But if it isn't, it's an odd choice because I'm surprised you wouldn't Stylistic just... Stylistic choice. Yeah, mix music in all the time. Uh, and then finally, I am 40 hours into Breath of the Wild on the Switch. Um, it's great. I love that game. I can't put it down for more than, like, an hour and then I go back to it. Um, I have finished all four beasts and now I'm doing the champions ballad, which is extremely difficult. Um, yeah, I was not expecting cause that wasn't out back the first time I put 40 hours into it. Yeah, so just so, imagine you beat breath of the wild and then it's what five, six months later, they release that and you pick it, pick it up for the first time. And I, I, I didn't, I think I beat the first challenge not the second one. Cause yeah. I was just like. I forgot how to play this game, let alone do this. So Yeah, so it kind of worked out. I, I still haven't gone and fought Ganon yet. Um, so I, I did the f I did two shrines so far. Um, and yeah, that was freaking annoying. There's two more shrines for the Champion's Ballad. And then I think it's over. So. Oh, okay. um, and uh, yeah, other than that, I'm just super enjoying it this time. Um, not that I didn't last time, but like, Everything feels new this time. I'm discovering things I never saw before. Um, yep. Fighting dragons, all sorts of stuff. So that game is incredible. Um, in case you've never played it, go play it. It's on Game I'm Pass. I'm jealous. So why wouldn't because you? I, I want to play Breath of the Wild, but I'm I'm holding off for Breath of the Wild too. So I'm I'm jealous that that you're experiencing. I know it's not really for the first time, but I'm jealous that you're experiencing it right now. And for me, I know that if I play it right now, I won't enjoy Breath of the Wild 2 as, as much. So I'm just like, uh, I like, you know. 
I, I like sail into a place and I'm like, oh, there's a there's a stable here, and then like all sorts of new stuff. Yeah, I just yeah, I, yeah. it's crazy how much is in that game, and I can't wait to see what they do with two. Hopefully, it doesn't suck. Uh, but who knows? Oh, I don't think it will. You know, could be a could be a Skyward Sword. Um, moving on. That's everything we've been playing, which means it's time for the news, folks. Which means it's time to play the news theme. Here's the news theme. Nope, it's not the news theme. That's the wrong one. But if I were to do this, then you would hear the news theme. Here's the news. We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What's up, news? Ah, the dulcet tones of Zach from Save Data. Who helping me out with a new show uh speaking of new throw an s on there you got news guys we have some news to so much talk a booze um there is uh, i'm gonna start with this playstation stuff because there's a lot of different playstation stuff and i figure we mm-hmm. just wrap it all up in a nice little playstation bow so starting with that i'm going to shout out housemark developer of Returnal, as many of you might know, uh, has been acquired by PlayStation Studios. Um, This happened the other day? Was it yesterday? Um, June 29th, so two days ago. Uh, They are part of the PlayStation Studios family, which means they get access to all the delicious PlayStation money. Um, Also in this announcement from PlayStation Japan... Uh, they accidentally posted the photo that said "Welcome Blue Point to the PlayStation Family," uh, which was then taken down, uh, which has not been announced. So that's a little baby boy oops uh, from <laughs> the PlayStation, uh, which isn't that surprising. Um, Blue Point, I believe they did the remaster of uh, Shadow of Demon's, the Colossus, Shadow of the Colossus, and Demon Souls. So, yeah, Demon Souls, Shadow of the Classes, Gravity Rush Remastered, Uncharted, Nathan Drake Collection. Yeah, so that kind of makes sense. The hits. Um, I think, uh, this is conjecture, but I wonder if PlayStation's just trying to bulk up a couple more studios as a la Xbox has been doing and Microsoft. Uh, but... I, I don't know, because I, I, I think it's a little different because these are studios that are already heavily working with Sony. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. that, so... that's my butt, is like, these are... Yeah. These seemed like a long time coming rather than a surprise. Yeah, um, my, my wild conjecture is if you remember when Respawn was bought by EA, the reason why that purchase went through was because um, EA and Respawn had an agreement in place when EA was their publisher that basically if Respawn ever got an offer from somebody else to acquire them, EA had the first rights to purchase. So essentially, I, I believe it was either Tencent or another company came along, offered to buy Respawn that triggered the contract for then Respawn to go to EA and say, hey, we have an offer, and then EA purchased them. So I'm not saying that's exactly what happened in this scenario. I don't know for sure, but I guarantee you this is a very close partnership, and uh, either Sony wanted to solidify that or there were th- possibly things up in the air, like they were going to maybe go to a different publisher or, or get a different acquisition, and Sony stepped in and bought them. But I, I, like you're saying, I don't think this is too terribly surprising. Um, but I do think it's a little bit different from Microsoft because it felt like Microsoft is buying studios that yeah. they don't necessarily have hands-on experience or quote-unquote ownership of. Whereas these are, I mean, if you look at Blue Point, like their last five, six games are just ports for Sony. You know, mm-hmm. so it's like, go ahead and bring them in house. And they were pushing. Sony was pushing Returnal pretty hard around yes. the PS5 with yeah just like they were throwing tons of money at that so it makes sense that they would bring house mark in house yeah so um i i'm kind of excited for this just because it 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 heats up uh uh the kind of microsoft sony fight and i feel like every time that happens us lowly gamers we benefit from it quite frankly yeah and uh if everything playstation's coming to to pc anyways then uh everything makes sense uh sony also acquired uh nix's nix's is that how you say this do you know i assume uh, n-i-x-x-e-s yes. has to be nix's right who knows uh 
They uh, to f- further further elevate PlayStation 2's exclusive titles. Uh, Nix has uh, worked on some of the ports to PCs that already happened for PlayStation. Um, there was a quote in here I wanted to read. That's why you're saying that quotes. the the conjecture is that completely unconfirmed that they are acquiring the studio because they want to ramp up the PC ports of PlayStation exclusive titles. So you might as well bring the studio in the house to assist with that. Oh, maybe uh, maybe this isn't the article I was thinking of. But yes, uh, it, it seems like PlayStation, uh, even with that leak about a month ago from that investor talk where they had, was it God of War and Uncharted on the PC thing? Or was it just Uncharted? Um, it definitely seems like Sony no, is no. starting to feed out stuff yeah. to PC. It was Uncharted Collection, wasn't it? I think it might have been. Was it God of War? I can't remember. Yeah. I'll look it up later. Let, let we, well, let's talk about it. They need to bring out Bloodborne or they need to do a PS5 because yeah. that game does not play well on PS4 and it desperately needs some improvements. Yeah. Um, it's exciting. I'm I'm glad um I'm glad PC is like the no man's land where both Microsoft obviously and Sony feel like releasing things. Um yeah. only Nintendo would get there, but uh granted that doesn't really matter. Um more uh sony news um ghost of tsushima getting a director's cut everyone's getting director's cut death stranding getting a director's cut ghost of tsushima getting a director's cut uh there is an upgrade path if you already own the ps4 copy the ps5 copy straight up is 69.99 um Nice. which is uh nice first of all second of all expensive so i think it's 30 for ps4 original to ps5 and then it is ten dollars to go from PS4 original to PS4 upgrade, and then twenty dollars to PS4 upgrade to PS5 version. So, no matter which way you play it, no, I think it's thirty. It's I think it's twenty PS4 to PS4 director's cut. I think it's thirty PS4 to PS5 director's cut. Right. So P- uh, let me. I'm you. saying PS4 original to PS5 director's cut is thirty. Yes. I'm saying yes. PS4 to PS4 director's cut. Is only ten. Is it only ten? I thought it was yeah. twenty. And then here's, 20 here's my point. Here's my takeaway. If you're going to charge me for extra content, I'm okay with that. You should absolutely not be charging for a next gen upgrade, especially when you're fighting against Microsoft, which has smart, smart delivery. They don't really care. It's cross gen, and they're going back and they're adding like 4K HDR to Xbox games for free. So what are you doing, Sony, coming around here trying to charge me money? just to play my PS4 game at PS5 textures, et cetera. You can play, you can play it on PS5 right now, but in order to get the full next gen experience, you're charging me money for it. That's BS. That should yeah. not be happening. Got to make their money. Um, Did that segue way into our, one of our other Sony stories. Take it. Oh, the Sony, Sony indies. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to intro intro that one? Yeah, I was kind of following this. Um, basically, there were some indie developers um, posting some uh, thinly veiled Twitter threads talking about how bad Sony is with supporting indie games. They basically said that um, their account managers, who essentially would work for Sony and handle the relationship with indie studios, are hard to get a hold of. They don't really care about you. You have to uh, have a $25,000 minimum spend in advertising, et cetera, to have a game featured on the storefront. And at the end of the, you have to get permission to have the game go on sale. Um, So at the end of the day, people were basically saying across all platforms for their popular indie titles, they're seeing less than 3% of the sales come from PlayStation consoles, Um, which honestly is pretty crazy because PS4 by far outsold everything else last gen in terms of hardware. And yet they are just, it sounds like they're doing a terrible job working with their indie devs. And because of that, people are just not buying indie games on the PlayStation. This this is kind of surprising, but when you think about it, when you think about all the indie sales and Game Pass you got going on on Microsoft and indie sales on uh, PC, and then if you, when you think about the Switch eShop and how they have that whole thing where just drop your price as much as possible and you get on the front of the store and then you make a bunch of money off the 99 cent stale sales, you don't hear anything like that or know anything like that from PlayStation because it's just, here's a $20 game. Maybe it'll go on sale for $15 around state of play. So yeah, like I was sitting and thinking about it and 
I I really only use my PS4 for big AAA releases. I have all my indies on Steam or Switch. Um, yeah. And that wasn't like a conscious decision, being like, I'm just not going to buy any indies on PlayStation. But apparently PlayStation's not even trying to sell them to me. So, Yeah, there's a, there's a crazy quote here from Jay Tholen, the Hypnospace Outlaw developer, who says he's pretty sure they have made more sales on Itch alone, itch.io, than they have on PlayStation, which is that's bonkers, crazy. Because yeah. th- that's that's a full title. That's not like some indie throwaway. That's a full title that came out, indie game, got a lot of press, and it. I just I can't believe that. That's crazy. Yeah, Matthew White from Whitehorn Games said they they made more on Google Ad Mob than uh, PS4 or PlayStation that month. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's absolutely crazy. Um, is that it for the Sony news? I think it is. I think so. I would say Sony adjacent news is the um, Konami and Bloober team are announcing a partnership amidst all this ad- admit, ad- amidst, 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 um, amidst, amidst. Thank you. I don't know why I was putting a D at the beginning. All these Silent Hill news with Kojima and everything like that. Uh, so they are officially partnering together. Um, it's a pachinko machine. <laughs> yeah, it's a pachinko, uh-huh. silent Hill pachinko machine. Um, the layers of layers of fear, the medium. What was the other one they did? Not, layers of fear two, I guess is that it. Uh, were they weren't the observer folks, were they? I don't believe so. Um, they're they have I'll very. Look it up. I B I feel like they have B rank horror games. Uh and I, I mean that slightly as an insult, but not mostly as an insult. Uh I feel like Go. Here we go. Layers of Fear, Observer, Blair Witch, oh, the it is Observer. Okay, you're right. Ding ding ding. For some reason I thought someone else did Ten observer. Point to Jake. No, you get zero points. Did we did we play Layers of Fear on Spooky Pixel? I thought I don't you guys think played so. Blair Witch. We did Blair we... Witch. I don't think we played Layers of Fear because I had watched a playthrough of it. Terry oh, Studios right. played Layers right. of Fear at like 20 frames a second. Nice. That's you know that's the best frames. Mm-hmm. Um, um. So I I so the big thing about this is there's a lot of rumors out there about a Silent Hill remake, reboot, etc. A new Silent Hill game. Bloober has been in the mix in that rumor before this was announced. So this feels like. This feels like partial confirmation in a way. Konami saying, yes, we're working with Bloober team on a game. And the rest of the rumor, it feels like it's just going to drop at some point that, yes, it's a Silent Hill game. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Or it's a Castlevania horror game. <gasps> That'd be pretty cool. That's because I think Bloober's strengths have always been in the gameplay more so than the storytelling. So if, yeah. if Konami were to be like, hey, here's our story group, build a game around this narrative that we come up with, it seems yeah. like it's a good match. But we'll see. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I, I, as far as I remember, I remember the Layers of Fear story to be kind of disappointing. Like, it was a neat uh, like thing at first, but after like the second, uh, I think you found like body parts or something. It was kind of just like, yeah, meh. It's, you're, yeah, you're making a painting out of what turns out to be a bunch of human bits. Oh, I love human bits. And it's like, did you kill your family? Did they leave? Did it was it was nebulous in in good ways, but I think yeah. it overstayed its welcome. It, it, by the it end. was a it was a try hard, not a try hard attempt, but it was trying to get the magic of the first amnesia game, but not quite nailing it. Uh, for sure. Um, speaking of nailing it, Magic did not nail it. Magic Legends, uh, and probably Game of the Year 2019, I think it was, uh, is shutting down uh, October 31st, 2021. Ian loves that, Magic did it Legends. Did come out in 2019? Is that... No, it came out in March of 2021. That's the story. <laughs> it, oh. I don't think it, even, it never even came out. It came out in beta. I think it was an open beta. So this thing is just came out kind of oh it's bad oh it's so bad let's just shut it down and then they had a bunch of layoffs today Man, so faster than uh what's the steam one arc no. oh our uh, artifact artifact yeah but here's the crazy thing though okay look look i think I, i'm thinking about cyberpunk right on the one hand it's like look you came out with a bad product and i would like it if you would make it better right 
On the other hand, you came out with a bad product. Don't waste more time and money on it. Just take mm -hmm. it out back and shoot it. You know, a la No Man's Sky. Um, so it's one of those no things Man's where it's Sky like, is good now. No, it's not good. Well, it's, it's not good, Jake. They just added more shit to it, but they didn't <laughs> fix any of the underlying issues. So here's my point. It's like, it's sad to see this story. And it's always like a shock to be like, no, they gave up on it. But I know part of me is like, if they just kept going on this game for another two years, like wasn't Battleborn around for two years? It's like, yeah, what are you doing? Yeah, just get rid of it. What are you doing? Cut your losses, man. Is and so it's a, it's a tough story, but and I didn't play the game. I don't know the situation, but this could be the right move. You well, know, what's the? I don't know. There's another magic mobile, or I don't know if it's online or Magic Gathering Arena. I think it's called. That yeah, I, I think that's like it's card. doing well. I'm gonna look. At I know that. people who play it. I think that's the one Matt Rory from Giant Bomb plays. I've just got to remember. Physical cards. I'm going to look it up because the thing is they have a couple things. They also have the uh, the MMO that's coming up. So there the is... Anime. Uh, oh Magic no, the Gathering Wikipedia anime? Article. I think so. I think that, uh, like a couple months ago they announced a Magic the Gathering anime held yes. by the Russo brothers. Of yes, they did. Avengers Endgame fame. Of the Lego so, movie fame? Of development. No. No, it's Lord and Miller. The Lord and Chris Miller. Uh, sorry, Community. Yeah. Magic the Gathering Arena has been out since 2019, and that is it's a basically digital collectible card game yeah. version of Magic the Gathering. It's basically the yeah. same thing, but um, I believe there is an MMO that's being worked on. I think you're right. And then Legends is the one that just died. And then no I really wish this Wikipedia list was chronologically listed. It's alphabetically listed. Oh, I hate it but, when they do that. Yeah. Oh, so I hate when my article. I think I, they're doing like they're doing like ten percent of the Warhammer thing, which is basically a couple years ago. Warhammer was just like Warhammer and Warhammer Forty K were just like, hey, what if we just let anybody use our license for video games? <laughs> and so they're starting to do that. Um, so we'll just we'll have to see what comes out of it. I think this is one of the first big casualties from it, though. Yeah. Um. I don't. I'm sorry. I, I don't like magic. I think it's stupid. Um, it's a scam. Yeah, like the cutting the lady in half. It's stupid. Uh, moving on. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, wait. Yep, I get it now. Nailed it. Sorry, I'm joking too high for for Ian. <laughs> moving on, Ian. Uh, this pertains to you. Former Mass Effect director Casey Hudson founds a new studio called Humanoid. Uh, Looks like they picked the first round of names, and you got that. Um, I like. You know, do you know Casey Hudson? Because the thing is, like, I'm new to this whole Mass Effect thing. So, like, what is he responsible for, and or what can be, what can he be blamed for? You know, I believe he was the cre lead director for the Mass Effect trilogy, and also Anthem. Game director for Mass Effect Trilogy. And then he left in 2014. And then he came back 2017 as general manager for the studio. So oh, he was general manager was. between 2017 and 2020, which is that's isn't that that's Anthem that's and Anthem time. Is that Andromeda, Andromeda as well? Probably the tail end of Andromeda, though, but. Yeah. So that's the thing is that like I understand people want to be excited for this guy, but at the same time I'm like, okay, he did some good stuff, but how much of the bad stuff did he do? So Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, it's exciting. I'm glad he's back making games and stuff like that. Um but yeah, I think as you were saying, he was better as a game director than a general manager. Uh so we'll see how that that pans out. Um Sorry, they just wrote at the end. They mentioned the Mark Dara leaving from Dragon Age, but he has nothing to do that with this. They just mentioned it at the bottom. Weeks ago? I don't know why. No, it was in December 2020, so some weeks ago. Um, I didn't want to add a comment, Google. Jeepers. Uh, Jake, is it you who hasn't played Control yet? No, I've played Control. I made two oh, videos wait. about it for the channel. Did you, did you play it when it came out or did you wait a little bit? 
Uh, I, think it. I think you played it like shortly after it came shortly, out. Shortly, yeah. I didn't play it at a launch. Week or two. I think you guys played it at launch for stream, and Maybe I definitely that's played it I... after you guys. I distinctly remember talking oh. to someone about Control, and then being like, oh, "I haven't gotten a chance to play it yet." I don't but think no. It was I made that. two analytical videos about Control. That's what I thought. I don't know why for in my our brain. YouTube channel. I was thinking, I don't watch our YouTube channel. It sucks. Our what? Um. Anyways. I love uh, Control. Fine. If you love Control so much, talk about the article. Yeah, so they announced uh, that along with, in partnership with 505, they're making some more stuff in the Control universe. Control um, universe. Yeah, which I, I'm super into the idea of that. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think while playing Control, I ever would have thought to myself, hmm, this could use a multiplayer mode. Um, but so I'm interested to see what they're kind of going to do with that. Uh, I believe it's a, um, it's a four person co-op. Yeah. And the, the slight rumors around it, well, rumors, but they were teasing it a little bit, but not confirmed is that you're going to be one of the field teams who goes out to get these anomalies. Cause I like that idea, like yeah. in terms of like the narrative and the, the, like the in-universe lore. Because of that, I was all super into that when I was playing the game. Um, yeah, but um, I'm I'm wondering how much they're going to mix up the gameplay because the gameplay mm -hmm. I don't the gameplay yeah. and control I don't think translates to a co-op um, like a Left 4 Dead type thing, which I don't know if yeah, that's, that's what they are planning on doing. But I, I think they can make it work if like, if you're like specialist classes and stuff like that. So you have different yeah. types of power. Uh, this concept art they posted is chef's kiss because it is four guys decked out in armor with a body bag in front of them in a waiting room for like a DMV style government building that has now processing a number and it has a take a number thing, which uh, if any of you know me, I love government bureaucracy where it doesn't make sense. And like that's I did, one of those things that it's very good. When when this picture floated across my Twitter feed, I did without super closely looking at it think it was like like somebody's fancy Team Fortress fan art. Um, yeah. But um, and then I was like, oh, that's the remedy. Logo. This looks like oh, action then, figures. It does have kind of like a like a diorama yeah. vibe to it. Yeah, but. it's very good. Uh, I'm excited for more control. Um, I like control a lot. Mm -hmm. A whole lot, and uh, yeah, I'm more the merrier. Yeah, I, I, I was, I guess, not super surprised, but I thought it was interesting that it came from Michael Kasernan and not Sam Lake. But maybe he's working on other stuff in the studio. But... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they've they've got a a couple different deals going on right now. Yeah. Uh, moving on, folks. We got three stories left. What do you think are exciting enough to talk about? Well, you know, we could do a quick hit real on real quick on this Nintendo story. So basically, there was a working prototype of a realistic F Zero game on the Switch. Um, this story comes from Vite's Gilles Godard, who, if you remember, is uh, they did the um, uh, Steel Diver and Sub Wars and some other 3DS games. They basically put together a realistic F-Zero game and they showed it to Nintendo and had them play it and Nintendo said, no, thank you. Dang. Unfortunate. I want more Captain Falcon. I like Captain Falcon. I Like, at this point, since... When did the last one come out? 2003? A long 2004. Oh, yeah, ago. 2004. Like, kids who play Smash no captain falcon from smash mm -hmm. like they don't say oh that's the guy from f-zero yeah. was that's the guy from smash or three console because it was gamecube is that three console generations ago the wii the wii u and then the switch yeah yeah that's a long time yeah. it's too yeah. long so it's interesting because he it, you know he's telling this story and he says Quote, Nintendo are very wary about using old IP because it's such a huge thing for them to do. It's much easier to go with a new idea, a new IP, than to reuse an old one, end quote. Which I, I just want to, I think that makes sense, and I want to shout it out. 
I know we get frustrated because sometimes it feels like they have these IPs that they've let die or lay dormant for too long. But honestly, God bless them because that is exactly the opposite to the current Hollywood thinking, mm -hmm. which is no new things, only stick with existing IPs. It doesn't even have to be good. We don't even have to treat it properly. We just need to slap Ghostbusters on it and it'll sell like hotcakes. Um, I love Star Wars, I, I, but I'm I will argue that yes. I can, while they're not, while they're cramming out Ghostbusters movies, I can still watch the original Ghostbusters movies in Blu ray 4K. But I can't play the original F Zero games on my Switch. That's I think point. that is yeah. a trade off that I would like. The archival yes. aspect of. Yeah. Even though they're making shitty Star Wars movies, I can still watch the old Star Wars movies. Um, so, definitely a yeah. thing. Uh, and uh, there's a Dead Space remake in the works at Motive. Um, I don't know. I, so that. Is it Glenn Schofield is the Dead Space guy? He has a new game that's something po protocol that was announced last year? Or was it Game Calypso Awards? Protocol. Calypso Protocol. I thought it was protocol. late last year. Or maybe it was at the Game Awards. And I believe it is. it takes place in the PUBG universe, if I'm not yes, mistaken. Yes, yes. That I was the weird tidbit about that. that. Yeah. Um, I'm very much looking forward to that. So that is the game that's going to fill my Dead Space void. Uh, I played 1 and 2 last year out of sheer boredom. Uh, great games. Uh, I don't know why you would remake one, not just make another one. I don't. Well, I think because, and this is in the story, their reasoning is, look at Resident Evil 2 Remake. It's a fantastic reinterpretation, remake of the original that adds a lot of stuff, improves some stuff, and there's been enough time that you can kind of do that. And I know Dead Space isn't that old, but at the same time, if you could do a remake like that where it's 75% the original but a lot of good stuff on top of it. I I think that's a lot less risky than doing a brand new IP or a sequel. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. But I, as someone who played Dead Space last year, there was like probably nothing I would add to it. Like it had so many, it, it had so many good things about it that most AAA games don't. Like it has the map thing where you just hit the button and it tells you where to go. I mean, it's got, yeah. I don't know what you would even add to that versus Resident Evil 2 Remake is a completely different game than the original so i don't but, know i mean if you think about if you think about so mass effect one in the mass effect legendary uh remaster they did recently i don't think there's a huge amount of changes but you can definitely improve the feel of it you could standardize controls etc you know granted i haven't played dead space but i think there is always things you can it's like when you play an old game and you go wow this is really cool there's some things that are a little wonky about it because it's an old game but that's okay if you had the capability to go in there and fix all those things and standardize it and redo all the textures and 4K HDR it and then add in like maybe some extra areas, add in some new mechanics, I think I think this could be something pretty cool. Yeah, I guess I would argue that would be a remaster. Like, I don't know why I call it a remake. No, because... Like I Final think Fantasy re VII remake. Yeah. Yeah, but that's yeah, like I an think overhaul would... remake. Same with but Resident, Resident Evil, Evil 2. But no, that's what I'm saying. Resident Evil 2 is but Mass Effect's almost not a the remake, same as Resident Evil 2. Yeah, yeah, but what I, mean, what I mean is not do it like Mass Effect 1, but Mass Effect 1 is about the same age as Dead Space, but there's more than enough in Mass Effect 1 that you could improve in that same period of time. So my point being, I understand you played it recently and you think it's fine, but I guarantee you there's still plenty in there especially if you're given creative license and you're a good studio that you, you could definitely come in there and rip some stuff up and make a good remake out of it. Yeah, I guess I, I just think there's a lot more things that are more deserving of that than dead space for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, Minecraft too. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather just see a, more dead space than a remake. Um, well, where do you think the story would go? I don't, I only played a little bit of three, so I don't, no, we found another uh, gross alien artifact that's turning people into yeah. gross aliens. But you could just do something outside of the alien artifact storyline. Yeah, you could be somewhere or else. Get bogged have... down like, like the alien universe. Yeah, love me some aliens. Um, and a final piece of news uh, for a quick hit here. Um, Kojima apparently signed a letter. Of, Kojima Productions signed a letter of intent with Xbox. Uh, working on a new game 
for their cloud gaming service, uh, specifically cloud, cloud-based cloud game. Uh, this is in tandem with that Kim Swift, who was re uh, formerly Portal and Left 4 Dead developer, was hired to oversee partnerships for cloud-based games. So uh, this is exciting. It's not something to bet the farm on. Uh, as a couple people pointed out, letters of intent are never meant to be broken, but they can be broken because things change. So um, also, this is this is still rumored. This has not been yes confirmed. Still 100% so. rumors. This is from Jeff Grubb, a hot guy uh, during yeah. Grub snacks today at Giant Bomb. Um, yeah, so that's the news, folks. If you enjoyed it, you can write into your local newspaper and tell them. So you should definitely do that. Um, New York Times, the publishing deal. watch out. Uh, moving on, gentlemen, it's time. Do you know what it's time for? It's time to add a game. I haven't even thought about this. To the list. I haven't even thought about it either because I was about to end the show and I forgot there's still this thing. Boys. We're Boys to men. We got 33 games on this stupid freaking list, which means we got to add three more. Um, here, I'll post it in chat for you. Show me the list. There. There's the list for you. I gotta see where my games have ended up in the weeks since I've been here. The months. The many, many weeks. For my many, many children. Um. Boy. So we're gonna add... So you can... Let me lay out the rules, because I never do this. Jake, you can either mm -hmm. add a game... Or pick a game to put somewhere else. Mm. But but you pick a game for us to rediscuss. Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. Right. You, you pick a game pick for right. us to rediscuss. But you you're yeah. you're pitching where you want to put it instead. Um, okay. Ian, do you have a game? Yeah. What is your game? You know, let's talk about Grand Theft Auto V. Ooh. Um, Grand Theft Auto V originally came out in, uh, I believe it was 2013, September. 13? I think it was 2013. Yeah, I was in college. Yes, it was September 2013 for the Xbox 360 PS3, later ported to the PS4, PS, Xbox uh, One, and then later soon to be ported to the Xbox Series SX and it's the Steam. PS5. Um, this is the fifth entry in the Grand Theft Auto series. This game, you know, it has, I, I think it's about a 40 or 50 hour single player. It's got a lot of online that it's added. I'm not sure how I feel about this game. Let me go through it, right? Positives. There's crazy tech in this game. You mm -hmm. know, it's a 360 game, but it has these things like Michael, when he wears flip flops, they actually flip flop on his feet. Um, you can shoot a car in the gas tank and it will leak gas and then you can shoot the gas trail to light it on fire and it will follow all the way to the car and blow it up. There's some interesting story things that are going on. I think Trevor is uh, an over-the-top character, but he's still pretty good. I, I do like the map. I do like the, um, the vehicle physics. They do a good job of that. However, I don't think the story is that great. They're trying something, but it's not quite there. You know, they tried to add in like multiple characters and some choices, but it didn't didn't really feel great um i feel like this is right on the cusp of this is probably like the last rockstar game that felt good before them doing that same thing in red dead redemption 2 felt old and in terms of feeling good i mean in terms of like mission structure etc because i don't know if you guys have gone back to try and play it recently but it's just like hey pick this up go here Oh, here's a generic set piece. Here's a generic set piece. Grand Theft Auto Online is very ambitious. It is also, I would say, overall a failure. The heists are fun, but load times are crazy. Everything around it, all the like friend system, the inventory system, the hopping in and out of open world game spaces is just horribly... It's just very appalling as ex experience. It's difficult to hop in a game with your friends. It's difficult to be like, let's do this race, et cetera. It's just really bad. Um, and it's been like that for eight years now. So a lot of promise. I think, where would I put it on this list? You know, it's it's tough to say, but I honestly would put it 
my God, I would put it. Excuse me. I'm just looking at this. I would put it at the new number 20 below Mario Tennis above Horizon Zero, Zero Dawn. Uh, query. Would you like I almost feel like the story mode and online are two totally different experiences in terms of like a game. Um, Maybe, but it's still one package. You but know. you can buy them separately. You can play we, online now. Recently, recently, yeah, yeah. Re- pretty recently. But I think we consider it as one package. Story. Yeah, I think it's one okay. package. I, that's fair. I was just tossing it out there because uh, I would put GTA Online like near the bottom, honestly, because that that piece of crap system that they have just refused to fix in any way. I yeah, I, I would. I, 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 sorry, you go, Jake. No, I was going to say I agree almost completely with your placement but i would put it below horizon just because i really like horizon i know i'm the odd man out in this trio but i would definitely put it around there i was just gonna say i agree technically with the online even though i think the online's better than the single player because i had a lot more fun in the online Uh, when it works it works i I have like doesn't 200 almost 300 hours in that game and it's just and and you have and you you have to be playing with friends. It's very mm-hmm. hard to play with strangers in that. And I feel like you need to have a really good understanding of the systems of that online mode because you can't just hop in and just kind of do it. Like I remember a couple of years ago, I tried to hop in and do some of the business stuff, and I was like, "It's yeah, not you'll making it lost. clear how any of this works, etc." So so you definitely can have a lot of fun in that. Um, but just to push back on that, I would say it makes you work a lot for that fun you need to have like an encyclopedic knowledge yeah i I did most of that playthrough i did most of that playing when it first came out before it had any of that anyways and i usually don't engage with those systems even if i do go back and play it uh i the racing i think is great in that game um yeah yeah racing is good i i would i would i would put it above horizon zero dawn i'd put it at 20 fine all right, number 20, Grand Theft Auto 5. Oh, I apologize. I did not read the list at the beginning. But I will read it's it at long. the end, everybody. I am sorry. Um, Jake, do you have a game? Or would you like to rediscuss an old game? Uh, get over at my list. Um, my stack of games. Have we put? Have we put original... Flavor Animal Crossing on this list? I don't see it. I do not believe so. Okay. Original, as in the GameCube game? As 19, in the Japanese 19, N64? 49 or 2000. 64. It originally came, I mean, yeah, originally technically it was an N64 <laughs> game, and then I believe it was a launch title for the, game. for the GameCube. Yeah. Oh, I want to um, write my name. Sorry, I got it. Yes, you're right. I have the the GameCube American GameCube is a remaster of the N64 mm-hmm. Japanese game. Um, I don't know if there were any games like this before it, but I know that this was certainly the first time that I had played a game of this social simulation nature. I know there's a lot more now games like games like Stardew Valley um and the, you know the myriad Animal Crossing sequels. Um, but this was kind of the first time that I played a game where y- you didn't really have an objective. You could just go in and, you know, hang out, cut some trees down, talk to some neighbors, repaint your house. And it was just a really relaxing, cathartic experience for uh, a young boy of, you know, fewer than 10 years of age. Um Yeah. And I think that there were definitely weren't that many like it at the time. And even though there's a lot more now, it still is a very charming, very novel, relaxing experience. Um, yeah, I think um, uh, I think about another game that came out around this time, Seaman. And this was definitely a time where you were game developers were just like, hey, check out this crazy tech hey, you Pikachu, we can put a microphone on it. Let's mess around with that. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of those were just crazy experiments in game design, but they 
in the end, they kind of just came out as like weird little tech demo things. Yeah. Uh, Animal Crossing feels like that in a way. It feels like they were like, what if we just do a normal life? And yeah. It syncs to your console clock and all that it's stuff. That management simulator. Yeah. And then when it came out, it was actually a full game in its own right. You know, they could have very easily just been like, yeah, this is kind of where we're trying something out here. Let's see what sticks. But no, they built a full game around it. And I yeah. think the fact that it came out in the same time as those other crazy inventive games and has persisted mm -hmm. as a series, a very well beloved series. Yeah. Well, because it had, it, it had, it was using the GameCube's internal clock to do the whole 24 hour night cycle. It also yeah. like I yeah, I played it at a time in which I wasn't really paying attention to like the game's press or anything. So I don't know how much this was advertised, but like when around like a holiday time, there's events that happen in the game at specified yeah. times, fishing tournaments, not not least. And then like Christmas and, and stuff like that, um, where I would you know, not expecting that log like not logging in you GameCube. You yeah. turn on the game and then you're like, oh, there's a thing that's happening. Forgetting cool to save. Little... Yeah. Uh yeah, resetty <laughs> popping out and being like mm -hmm. um uh yeah. I think it's great. Where would you put it on the list? Uh um hmm. I don't know. It's very different, I think, from a lot of the stuff that's on here right now. I know that's not the point of this list or anything. I would put it at the new number eight between Knights of the Old Republic and Red Dead Redemption. I... I've not played KOTOR, but I'm just thinking about Animal Crossing and how it really... I don't want to necessarily say it birthed a genre, but... There's no violence in that game. You know, there's True. barely any competition other than like fishing tournaments, you yeah. know? So it was just such a bold creative step and for them to pull it off and for it to work and for it to persist, I kind of want to put it above KOTOR. I'd put it above KOTOR. I was I was putting it below that just because of the breadth of systems in in Star Wars, but um, yeah. Animal Crossing certainly is a deep, dense, technically ambitious game, I think, in a different yeah. way. So, yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd put it at number seven if y'all are okay with that. What do you think, Will? Just to be clear, we're talking about Animal Crossing the original, not New mm -hmm. Horizons, which is much further down the list because it has not innovated enough for the mm -hmm. series. I would agree with that. I would put it at the new number six. Over Half-Life? I'd put it over Half-Life. I mean, I'm the one who brought the game up, so I'm fine with it advancing higher <laughs> up the list. But I, I don't know if I would put it above Half Life for kind of the reasons that we're talking about in terms of like genre-defining experiences. But the I thing is, like you know, Half Life. Half Life not really though, because Half Life just took an existing genre, it polished and decided, it, yeah, and decided to like push it forward to be like, hey, what if we did some actual cinematic storytelling with this? That's fair. environmental storytelling. Whereas Animal Crossing is just like boom, whole new genre. I'll, I'll put it at six. I I think I like it at six. I think I like Thanks, it at Will. six too. You're welcome. I love six. Um, new number six, Animal Crossing. I, I have to bring up. I want to make sure. I can't. Rem I'm probably gonna paraphrase it, but Tim Rogers has a great quote about Animal Crossing that it taught kids to do two things: behave amicably in social situations and hate landlords. <laughs> and I think that's the defining trait of that game. Yes, yeah, sorry. Karen is organizing things all of a sudden, and I'm not sure why. So I apologize to my audio quality. Um, okay, my turn. I think we all know what game I'm going to add to this list. Move Outer Wilds down, baby. It's got to be done. Come on. Speaking of wilds, Breath of the Wild. Or as I like to call it, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Guys, speaking of innovations, this game took the open world genre, put it on its butt, and punched it in the face and said, listen, what if we made a game that was interesting all the time, no matter where you went, there was something to do, 
and you always were interested in like every time I go to quit that game, I'm like, oh, but what if I just popped over to the Zoro domain and just sold that guy a couple more luminous stones and then oh that gives you enough money, so I'll just go turn some of these ancient arrows or arrows into ancient arrows and let me just like collect that all up. Also, just, oh, let me just go spawn at the top of a tower and jump off and fly in this direction and see what I come across. Oh, there's a giant chasm here with a forgotten temple. What's a forgotten temple? Um, oh, there's a giant dragon flying towards me going through a portal. Uh, Breath of the Wild is an incredible game that does a lot of things well. I even argue that the, while not perfect, the weapon durability system really helps to shake up gameplay so you're not running into a place hitting a guy with a sword until he's dead you are actually thinking about what you're doing uh kind of strategically thinking about things so yeah well we need to talk about this game's flaws go for it um this game has very little story this game has four okay to good dungeons. This game has not great side quests. There's not a lot of them, and even when they are, they're not good. So while I do agree this game has great exploration and use of the open world and providing new tools, you know, stamina, climbing, the glider, the map system, the shrines, etc. This game's got some flaws. Uh, I'll uh, I'll agree to the story being a little lackluster and um but the side quests it has a lot of side quests. There are a ton of side quests. And but I if I'm if very I'm very varied. But how are they aren't aren't a lot of them just like go here or bring me this? It it's a lot of them are like you figuring out where to go and like how to like uh like there's the yeah. spring of power side quest that's like, oh it like says bring me this this uh it's a make, make a uh, offering of something and then you have to then figure out what that thing is and then go get yeah. it and you have to fight a dragon to take it off of them so I, i'll agree with the story stuff but as far as side quests there are a ton of side quests that are very yeah yeah and it's not so much the number it's just when i think about yakuza zero and this is this is literally not to compare it to on the list this is just i believe i played yakuza zero before i played Breath of the Wild. When did Breath of the Wild come out? 2017. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yakuza Zero was 20. Janu oh, here it is. January 2017 was Yakuza Zero in North America, and that has the greatest side quest I've played in any game because every single side quest had like its own little story, and it was compelling, and it was interesting, and it was funny, and it was unique. And then you go to something where Breath of the Wild and Granted, they have some of them that feel like little puzzles, but a lot of them are also like, oh, I'm making apple stew. Bring me four apples. And it's just like, they're not terrible. But at the same time, for everything that game did well, I feel like interacting with the denizens of that world was kind of hit and miss. It's just starter area MMO. Fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you do have to search a lot for the people who will give you good quests. Not search a lot, but you have to just make sure you're traveling the map. And granted, like, I, I don't know if I've played this game a lot more than most people, but um, I've definitely, like, searched every corner and talked to every person. So there's a lot of that. Yeah. Um, to finish up, I would put this at the new number three, uh, because I do agree it is the... I think Yakuza 0 is a better game, but I think it is better than Titanfall 2, even though Titanfall 2 has a very solid campaign. Uh, Titanfall 2 is way too high. I'm just going to say it. That is like a four-hour campaign. That's got to be lower. <laughs> but, but we could do... I'm, it's a blind spot. I'm not looking at Titanfall 2. I am looking at Factorio, though. I and am a and I'm looking at Doom. I have not played Breath of the Wild, so I cannot refute <laughs> its placement. Jake, you should really I'm surprised it. you haven't played I Breath know, of the Wild. I really want to. Here's my problem is I've seen so many people who are like, oh, there's so much to do. There's so much. It's so big that I'm having trouble starting it. So I need to find I, a time to like, yeah, because I wanted to be able to devote time to it. Yeah, it, it's, it's um, as someone who's who's played it twice now, twice, uh, it's it's pretty easy to get into and even take a break and like have it as a side game. 
Okay. Maybe okay, it'll I'm, go on sale before two comes out. I'm looking at it. Is Breath of the Wild better than Doom 1993? And or is it better than Animal Crossing? I love and I think Crossing. I think it's doing some very revolutionary things for the open world genre. But when we go back to things that are like establishing genres of their own. Here's the deal. Here's OK. All right. I thought we lost you for a second. <laughs> I, I think I'm okay with it being number three if we immediately rediscuss Titanfall 2. <laughs> no. Because you're going to put Titanfall 2 at like 32. No, I still think it's a great game, but it is not number three. And it's because that campaign, while fantastic, was literally only like four and a half, five hours long. And the rest of the game was the same multiplayer as Titanfall 1, which is honestly, it's okay. It's only good multiplayer if you like fast place deathmatch only. And so I don't think it's a number three. I would probably put Titanfall 2 down at like eight or nine. Yeah, I don't think the length of Titanfall 2's campaign has any diminishing effects on how good it is. Wait, well, no, we're, uh, we're starting to rediscuss it. We have to put <laughs> Breath of the Wild on the list first. Um, but I think that's part of the, like, I, I'm fine with it being number two. Three, if if we talk about Titanfall two, just because I think Titanfall two, when I look at like the top four, five, six, Titanfall two just feels out of place. Because yeah, so instead of number three, then I'll just put it at number four. No. <laughs> um. I think what I'm really saying is I think we should remove. I think we should move at least one game on this list tonight. Because there are some stuff that's starting to stick out as yeah. out of place. I mean, if each one of us didn't offer up a game, I'd totally be for it. But due to the amendments. Um, All right. So let me just let me just say this out loud. So it would be Outer Wilds, Yakuza 0, Breath of the Wild, Titanfall 2, Factorio, Doom, Animal Crossing, Half-Life. I, I, I'm just struggling a little bit with putting Breath of the Wild above Doom and Animal Crossing. And I think Doom was your addition putting it that high, which which I was okay with as a genre creating game in a way. So I, I need to hear that Doom versus Breath of the Wild fight from you, Will. Uh, I mean... I mean, honestly, Doom needs to be above Yakuza 0, but that's a completely different discussion. Um, I was mostly putting don't, it... Don't, then don't put Breath of the Wild above it. Right, That's but I got, I got to choose my battles here. I think Breath of the Wild is almost as good as Yakuza 0. So that's why I'm putting it below Yakuza 0. Oh, yeah, I see that. I mean, I can't think about this. Better thing. than Factorio? Uh, yeah, I would say better than Factorio. I could see that. I could see better than Factorio. Are there different vibes? Okay. I'm okay with it being number three. Yes! I will allow it. That's a win for Willie. I just, I'm just going to be sassy. Real I feel like every time I'm not on the podcast, I come back to this list and you guys are like, well, Titanfall 2, number three, done. <laughs> What's that easy? And it's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> that mostly it's easy was when that. you're wrong. It's a good campaign. Um, okay, let me read this list before, and then we can leave because I'm tired. <sighs> number one. Shouldn't be there. Outer Wilds. Number two, Yakuza 0. Number three, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Number four, Titanfall 2. Number five, Factorio. Number six, Doom 1993. Number seven, Animal Crossing. Number eight, Half-Life. Number nine, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Number 10, Red Dead Redemption. Number 11, Firewatch. 12, Mirror's Edge. 13, Ghost of Tsushima. 14, Control. 15, Kerbal Space Program. 16, Mass Effect 2. 17, Cuphead. 18, Prey 2017. 19, Shadow of the Colossus. 20, Star Wars Battlefront 2004. Number 21, Mario Tennis. Number 22, Grand Theft Auto 5. Number 23, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number 24, Battlefield 1943. Number 25, Middle Dash Earth, colon, Shadow of Mordor. Number 26, The Outer Worlds. Number 27, Gone Home. Number 28, Fallout uh, Halo 4. 29, Fallout 4. 30, No Man's Sky. 31, Daisy. 
32 Donkey Kong 64, 33 Brink, 34 Kingdom Hearts 3, 35 Cyberpunk 2077, and the worst game of all time, according to the Subpixel rating system, is Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. Whoo, we did it, guys. We did it. I, um, you know, we should, we're going to do something when this gets to 50 games on the list, right? Yes, we are. I, I my long blog post about it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> my we idea did. is that the original idea for this list was to come up with like a true rating system where a mediocre game is a five out of 10 versus a seven out of 10. I think we should have a big panel discussion like we talked about, but we have to boil this list down to 10 games. And it's just out of this list. What do we think is the perfect example of a five out of 10? The perfect example of a six out of 10 of a seven out of 10. That's pretty just good. an idea. It, just throwing so it then out when we when we review games later we're like and this you know the next game from whatchamacallit gets a solid cuphead out of 10. <laughs> 10. yeah yeah I'm, I'm okay with that that's a good idea that that helps us from reordering a 50 no one else is list. doing it yeah um uh, well let me start the outro music here folks thank you for listening if you listen all the way through this is a local chat. We are a Subpixel podcast. We're part of the Subpixel brand, folks. Subpixelfilms.com is bringing you straight to our YouTube channel where you can check out all of our hot, hot content. Also, anchor.fm slash local chat will bring you to this very podcast page where you can even give us money for free. Just give us money. Well, it's not free for you. It's free for us. Uh, joining me today was Ian Gibson. You can find him on Twitter at think gibson also joining us was jake terrio you can find him on twitter at jake underscore jake terrio under, underscore, at underscore jake terrio uh you can find me on twitter at hunt 70 you can find all of our content at subpixel team on instagram twitter facebook mixer twitch uh youtube all that great great stuff uh saturday we will not have a stream but sunday we will have probably either a board game stream or perhaps a multiplayer game stream because ian's coming to visit because we're vaccinated yay vaccinated Hooray. um and then uh monday ian's got a video going up about cruelty squad so definitely check that out i know i will because i'm interested in that um I think that's mostly it. Uh, tune in uh, to all of our great stuff. And we will be back here uh, next week. And there's a little bit left of this song, so I kind of have to vamp. But as great as it is, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, it's number three. And like my number three, I gotta go take a shit. <laughs>